Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today I'm excited and rather surprised to be bringing you a review for the new Marvel Legends Walmart exclusive classic Doctor Strange. This is a figure that had seemingly already come and gone as far as pre-orders were concerned by the time I even knew about it, but luckily Walmart did restock it, so I was very lucky to snag one, and now I can do a review for you guys. It's funny because I just covered an entire Marvel Legends wave centered around Doctor Strange, specifically the MCU version, but, you know, with that movie coming out, naturally Marvel and Hasbro are going to capitalize on, you know, name recognition and an opportunity to merchandise, so no surprise that this toy is being released right now. So hopefully you guys aren't sick to death of me doing Doctor Strange stuff already. I promise I do have many other Legends figures to come that'll be, you know, something different. But if you are excited to get a look at this guy, hang tight and we'll check him out together. That being said, if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're going to take a look at Doctor Strange's packaging, then we'll open it up, we'll check out the Sorcerer Supreme himself, plus his bevy of accessories. This guy actually clocks in at about $26 because he includes quite a bit more than your standard Legends figure. We'll also be checking out all Strange's posability. Naturally, I'll be doing some group shots and comparisons today, and then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So Doctor Strange comes in your standard Marvel Legends packaging. You actually get the Doctor Strange comic book logo down here at the bottom, and then front and center you get the figure. You get a few weapons, some spell effects, two alternate hands, and two alternate heads. One with closed eyes, which I assume is to make it look like Strange is meditating, and then another blue head. And a lot of people might be confused by that. And it's a reference to a somewhat short-lived stint during Doctor Strange's comic book time where he took on this masked appearance. So this isn't actually his head, it's a blue mask. Now, unfortunately, that's the only part of that specific costume of Strange's that this covers. Because technically his whole outfit should be quite different. But it's still a neat little nod to a lesser-known arc of Strange's history. On the sides, we get some really nice comic book style artwork of Doctor Strange, looking like he's casting a spell and being none too pleased with you. Then we get the uh, same artwork on the back, but flipped around, and it's a little more intricate now. You can see the spell he's casting. Some sort of creatures coming out of it. That's interesting. And then we also get some flavor text here. It says, Stephen Strange was a brilliant surgeon before an accident ruined his hands. Now he defends our reality from supernatural threats as Earth's Sorcerer Supreme. So, good bit of backstory for anyone who may not be familiar with the character. And because this is a solo release, there's no wave callouts or anything on the bottom. It's just a special edition figure. So, yeah, overall pretty cool. After reviewing mostly MCU-based figures so far, it is kind of neat to, you know, touch on something else and look at more comic-inspired characters. So let's go ahead and open up this box. All right, now we get Doctor Strange out of the package with all of his accessories laid out at his feet. We get his closed-eyed face, his masked face, two spell effects, a weapon holding hand, a closed fist, and then these two weapons here. And these are both classic weapons from the comics. So this little staff-looking thing that I just dropped, <laughs> this is called the Wand of Watum. So just one of his classic magical items here. Very cool looking. It's got like a demon head on either side. It's got this really nice gold paint finish to it. And then this thing... It's called the Axe of Angarumus, which was just a big magical axe that he found on the moon, of all places. And it's got some nice little nicks in it and stuff, which I presume is from being chewed on by monsters, because that's how he found it. Uh, so very nice looking. The sculpting on all these is really good. And then the strange figure itself is definitely one of the more intricate looking comic-based figures I've seen so far. So, I'll go ahead and take a look at him. Obviously, very, very nice head sculpt. Really good coloration. They even, like, color his lips a little pink there, so they stand out. I like that. Uh, his cape is, you know, very flowing and very nice looking. Got this nice embroidery around the edges. Got the big collar. And it's clasped with the Eye of Agamotto there. Now, this cape is attached to his body. It can't come off, which is a little disappointing to me. I, I don't know why they did it that way. Um... But they decided that was going to be unattachable. Or undetachable. Permanently attached. You know what I mean. Alright, he's got 
universal shoulders, though especially this one can be hampered by the cape being on there, but they do work nicely. He's got single bend elbows, but they do go pretty deep there. And of course he's got that elbow rotation too. And then he's got your universal wrists. He has an ab crunch, which is not ratcheted, which I actually prefer for ab crunch because you can get more fluid movement there. And yeah, he can extend his back though, again, kind of limited by the cape. He does have a full waist swivel that goes right here above the belt. And then he has universal hips, though these can be quite hampered by his attire. But they do work. He's got a thigh swivel, he's got the double bend knees, he's got a boot swivel, ankle rock, ankle tilt. Um, these actually appear to be the exact same legs used for characters like Despair, who I just reviewed not long ago. Um, so, seems to be a very often used, like, multi-purpose set of legs. Uh, but yeah, he, he does look pretty fantastic like this. Uh, having the big cape, he's a bit back heavy, so you have to be conscious of how you pose him. Otherwise, he'll probably just want to flop backwards on you. But he does look very, very cool. The way they have his cape just kind of wafting around like that and, you know, the little sash hanging down where it's not just limp, it makes him look very dynamic and makes it look like he's in the middle of some sort of action scene, which is something you want for a display piece, you know? So I think he's pretty fantastic looking. Now, we should start checking out these accessories. So the hands that he comes packaged with are supposed to be like spell casting hands. They could also work for like meditating hands too with that head with the closed eyes. Now, the way you attach these spell effects is a little weird. You have to pop the hands off like so. Then use this little loop here to like put there and then put the hand back on through the loop. Now, I don't really super like the way this works. I'll show you why. So you can't bring the hand, like push it back in all the way because the loop is now kind of separating the hand from his wrist because it's smaller than his actual wrist. Um, so you create the situation where you're kind of pinching it between the joint there. Uh, not crazy about that. I don't know why it was designed that way. Uh, I think these have been used before, so I guess it's just kind of multi-purpose and Maybe on other figures it works better, but on this one, the fit's just a little weird for me. Because um, I, I worry, this is in, this hoop here is essentially a C-clamp, and I, I don't like the way, or C-clip, <laughs> C-clamp's a transformer. Yeah, C-clip, and like I feel like you're putting a lot of stress on it by doing that. But you can get this really nice little pose of him casting spells with you know one or both hands, depending on your preference. And this is actually a very good time to go ahead and use that alternate head to really work. Looks like he's channeling something, so you go ahead and pop the head off, which can be kind of hard because you got this cape collar like all around it. Hard to get your fingers in there. Pop the new one on. If we'll go. <laughs> there we go. This one's pretty tight. Huh. Interesting. Really tight on that ball joint. But you can get something like this, where he looks like he's, you know, encanting or channeling a spell. And that looks pretty good, too. I like how it's got different hair than this one. Not just, like, the same mold with closed eyes. Like, they actually give him kind of messier-looking hair. Which, I mean, honestly, a little bit of a different haircut, kind of longer. So I guess it does just represent another point in Strange's life. So that's pretty cool-looking. And then alternatively, this will be fun popping off because it's so tight you can go ahead and attach his masked head, which hopefully isn't quite as tight. <clears throat> a little better. So you can get him looking uh, pretty much like Dr. Manhattan from Watchmen. Yes, I know, wrong comic company, but still, he totally looks like Dr. Manhattan. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. Oops. Again, I think the total effect is lost with this particular head because you don't get the full costume, which... I mean, it's not super, super different. It's still got like a red cape and, you know, costume's mostly blue. But the costume he donned when he took this form had a lot more blue going on in here, like with the gloves and all that. So I know I'm being kind of nitpicky there, but what's the point of doing reviews if you can't critique a figure, you know? And lastly, let's switch to his other hands so we can take the stress off these spell pieces. Let's go ahead and toss these to the side. Give him his weapon holding hand here, closed fist here. It's kind of a shame they're not both weapon holding hands because he has two weapons and he could have dual wield. 
but that's not the case here. All right, so first we'll go ahead and have him hold the wand. The wand of Watum. Uh, it holds it okay. It doesn't fit into his curled fingers very well and kind of points outward. But you can get him, you know, kind of holding that like he's about to use it if you want to. Or for what's, in my opinion, the cooler weapon, we'll do our axe. Just attach the same way, just kind of slide it in there. Uh, the haft of the axe is it's a little thinner than the wand, but it still doesn't fit in his fingers very well. It kind of just hangs there. So I think they definitely could have sculpted his hand a little better for these accessories. Um, but you can get him to kind of hold it. <laughs> not, it's not great. Uh, so you see it here, he's got his axe ready to start swinging it at something. So you have a lot of options here. You know, they charge a couple extra bucks, but the trade-off is that you get more accessories to play with, so you get a more fleshed out play experience. Or if you're a grown adult like me, who definitely doesn't play with his toys, because I don't I do not do that, not me. Uh, you know, it's good for display too. Just saying, I don't play with toys. Here's a comparison shot with the previously reviewed MCU Doctor Strange from the upcoming Multiverse of Madness movie. And you can see that between them, the overall cues are all there. You got the blue outfit, red cape, the eye of Agamotto. Strange has his, you know, signature gray or white sideburns there, the mustache. But then there are some key differences. MCU Doctor Strange has more of a full goatee than just a mustache. He's also generally a bit younger looking. And then when it comes to the outfit, as is usually the case for the MCU, the outfit itself is less bright, you know, a little less cartoony looking, but also busier when it comes to surface detail. I talked about this in another review that MCU outfits, they love lines. <laughs> they love textures and lines on these things, uh, which isn't a bad thing, just a different aesthetic. But you can see how, you know, this guy, while he goes heavier on the color, for surface detail, he's a bit flatter. And that's just kind of the main difference between your live action and comic book aesthetics. Now, I think they're both great at being what they are. I'm personally a huge fan of Benedict Cumberbatch's portrayal of Doctor Strange. I think he's like perfect for that role. But there's also a nice wizardly quality that comes from the comic book version. So again, both just doing their own thing, both really great figures in their own right. It is a shame that his cape can't come off because how cool would it be to like swap their capes? Sadly, not an option here. And for my last group shot I'll do today, here is the Wrencher Wave figure, Despair. And the reason I want to bring him out is to highlight the similarity in their leg design. You can see it appears to be all the same pieces here. You know, at least from like, you know, the hip joint down. Both also happen to be the same color, though Strange's legs do appear to be a darker shade of black and have more of a sheen to them. Uh, but it is interesting because I'm barely more than a wave into these figures and I've already encountered two that have the exact same legs and then kind of two and a half if you count sleepwalker because he's got mostly the same but then they swap out this like calf area for bigger boots so i'm guessing that in my time collecting marvel legends i'm probably going to see this design a lot like specifically these legs with these pointy toed feet it seems to be a real go-to for hasbro not a bad thing again like i said during sleepwalkers review if sharing parts makes sense do it like, as long as it doesn't compromise the look of the figure, it's a good way to keep production costs down and, you know, hopefully pass those savings on to the consumer. Maybe. Hopefully. And this completes our look at the new Walmart-exclusive Doctor Strange. Overall, I do like this toy. I think it's, you know, very well fleshed out. It comes with a lot of cool accessories, a lot of ni uh, nice little Easter eggs and nods to Doctor Strange's past and just kind of serves as a good celebration of the character's history, which, you know, is right on time because we got that new movie coming out. So, like I said, Hasbro, Marvel, they know what they're doing. <laughs> they know how to merchandise stuff. You know, Disney's all about that merchandise. Um, but I think it is, you know, a neat little take to get a comic-oriented Doctor Strange right after getting a whole bunch of MCU versions, uh, just so you can really see the big difference between them and kind of decide for yourself you know, which one you like more, or if you just like them both and you want everything, you know, be a completionist like me. So, yeah, I'm very happy with the figure. I think for the extra $2 or so that they charge for it, you get, you know, some really, really good accessories. I think both the wand and the axe came out very well. They're very well sculpted and painted. 
The alternate heads are very cool. Uh, especially, again, that weird blue mask head is just a really, really out there nod. I like those deep cuts like that. Um, and then, of course, the strange figure himself is fantastic. He's, you know, very well sculpted. The head sculpt is great. The cape, the outfit. Um, you know, the legs, they're nothing new, but they work for him because, you know, most of these com comic book characters just wear skin tight stuff a lot. So it works. Uh, so, yeah, I'm very happy I got this guy. As of recording this, he is still available on Walmart.com and will apparently only be available on Walmart.com. So if you do want to pick this up, you will have to order it through that. Um, haven't always had the best experiences with Walmart, but they did ship this guy out very promptly. Like, I ordered him yesterday and got him today. That's super, super fast. Um, so I think he's worth getting if you do like, you know, the comic book version of the character or you're just, you know, kind of a comic completionist or you just want a cool Legends figure. Of course, that is just my take on this new Strange figure. So now I want to know what you all think of him. Did he meet your expectations? You know, is he kind of your quintessential comic book Doctor Strange? Or do you find him lacking in some way? Maybe you don't like the accessories, the sculpt. Um, you don't want to buy stuff from Walmart. I know some people that do absolutely refuse to shop at Walmart. Any and all feedbacks, always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this very cool look at the new Walmart-exclusive Marvel Legends Classic Doctor Strange. And with all that said, I will see you next time.